G'day, welcome to Partakers Wednesday Worship on the 16th of November 2011. Come, let's worship God together. We start with the Creed, a historic confession of our belief as Christians. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of Heaven and Earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now have a series of three Bible readings. Our first reading is from Psalm 10 and verse 14. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdst mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Now we have a reading from Psalm 89, verse 19 to 29. And our reader is Richard. Over to you, Richard. Once you spoke in a vision. To your faithful people you said, I have bestowed strength on a warrior. I have exalted a young man from among the people. I have found David my servant. With my sacred oil I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. No enemy will subject him to tribute. No wicked man will oppress him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My faithful love will be with him, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Saviour. I will also appoint him my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. I will maintain my love to him forever and my covenant with him will never fail. I will establish his line forever, his throne as long as the heavens endure. Thanks, Richard. That was great. Our final Bible reading is from the New Testament, and it's 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3 and 4. Blessed be God! Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. This is the word of the Lord. Let's be thankful to God for it. Amen. I wonder what your relationship with your earthly father was like. After all, the vast majority of all people, to some extent, have had an earthly father or father figure. Your father may never have shown you love, consideration or friendship. On the other hand, your relationship with your father may have been everything you could hope and desire for in a father-child relationship. Either way, cast aside all thoughts of your earthly father as we consider together today, God the Father. 
Perhaps you're one of the, the minority who had no father or father figure in your life at all while you were growing up and developing. Well, there is good news here for you as well. We're going to look today very briefly at God the Father. He is the Almighty who intervenes, sustains and provides for all things. God the Father is a perfect Father. And firstly, he is the father of all creation. As all of humanity is made in the image of God, the fatherhood of God must apply, therefore, to all humanity. God is the father of our spirits, according to the writer of Hebrews 12, verse 9. God as father wants everyone to be in his kingdom, Luke 18, verse 16. And by wanting to be called father... This means that God is a personal God. He loves all of his creation and he sustains it. And he wants his creation, his people, to be in relationship with him. And not only that, he is the father of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. From when Jesus as a 12-year-old proclaimed he was about his father's business, to his teaching on prayer when he said to call God Father, to the agonizing prayer of John 17, and in his final words on the cross, Jesus cried out, Father God, into your hands I commit my spirit. The words Jesus spoke were those he heard from the Father. The actions Jesus did were those he saw the Father doing. John 5 Verse 19. And because all those who follow Jesus Christ, God is Father, because Jesus Christ was the Son. Romans 8 verse 17 and Hebrews 2 verse 17. The followers of Jesus Christ, those who are Christian disciples, have been adopted as heirs and as children. John 1 verse 12. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, you and I are to partake of the Father's nature, 2 Peter 1, verse 3 to 4. Isn't that amazing? Even more amazing is that God the Father both cares for his children, Matthew 6, verse 32, and also disciplines his children, Hebrews 12, verse 6 to 8. Above all these things, though, as followers of Jesus Christ, we can never be separated from the love of God the Father. Romans 8 verse 39 Isn't that just the most amazing thing? We can never be separated from the love of God the Father as followers of Jesus Christ. Let's go knowing that He adores you. Now let's have a short time where you can offer your own praise and thanks to God for things that are on your own mind and heart. If for some reason words are failing you, simply pray, Lord God, I lift up thanks and praise to you alone. Hallelujah. Father, accept these praises as sweet-smelling perfume. Amen. Remember, God is your Father, and He loves you and adores you. Keep following His Son, Jesus Christ. And with that in mind, let's finish up with a song. Today, it's Lord of Creation. You 
Thanks for joining us on Partakers Wednesday Worship. See you again real soon.